Hello and welcome to Have a Chat. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host for today's show, Judy Loge, joined by my beautiful co-host and my friend, Veronique Arsenault. I love coming on Mondays because you make me feel so good. I know. We talk all the time, but it's not yeah. like we get in person a lot. No, we don't true. see that much of each other one-on-one, -on -one, so it's yep. always a Monday treat. Yes. And thank you again for being with us with the Rogers crew here in beautiful Miramichi, New Brunswick. So we always start our show with a quote. Mm -hmm. And what do you have? Well, and it's a quote by um, one of my famous, you know, world figures. I always find him fascinating in how he managed to kind of keep his, his view of life going while he was incarcerated for a couple of decades, actually. And it's a quote by Nelson Mandela. The great. Yeah, he was he's amazing. quite amazing. Oh, um, yes. So it says, what counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived. It is what difference we have made to the lives of others. That just kind of moves me because I think I, I try to live up to that yeah, quote. Absolutely. I really do. Absolutely. And I think, you know, sometimes we get so overwhelmed by the thought that we have to do so much, right? That if we don't do so much, mm -hmm. we're not really helping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it it's it some days it's just did you reach out and phone somebody and maybe mm -hmm. they needed it that day? Touch. Or you know, did you post something funny that made something laugh, you know, somebody laugh on Facebook? Like there, there's so many different ways that we can help people yeah. and make an impact and a positive impact. You know, did, did you tell somebody that you were proud of them today? Yes. You know, and mean it, <laughs> right? Mean like, it. and sometimes it's, did you volunteer your time or, mm -hmm. or whatever it may mm -hmm. be or, or donate some money or whatever. But it's, it's, we forget sometimes that it doesn't have to be big. No, it can be, but it can be just one thing. Yeah. To one, to thing. one person. And, and exactly little by little and that's yeah. how we build up you know each yeah. other and community and and uh, get that kindness wheel going yeah and I'm always fascinated by Nelson Mandela because oh, he yes. spent he spent decades in prison um, you know and and in the worst conditions mm -hmm. and he could have been such a bitter angry vindictive man and he came out and decided to do the best that he could with, the, with his life totally you know? inspiring isn't it yeah i find him amazing and i actually uh, got to visit robin island where he was in prison oh. and it's it's it was horrifying the conditions that he was in and i don't know how he didn't lose his mind no. truly and then to come out and do all he yep. did yeah i i've always found him fascinating he is yeah. he is <laughs> uh, just a, a beautiful soul he mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. uh, thanks for sharing that quote with us very unique and so how was your weekend <laughs> pretty pretty good I mean it was busy it was it was amazing I, I yeah. had the best time actually so good um so auntie Andrea arrived on Friday night Hi, Andrea. <laughs> yeah so happy to have her home I always love when she yes. comes for a visit she's uh she's only about 12 I think years older than I am so we're more like sisters I know. than we are you know she's such a good person yeah yeah so it's it's really it's great when she comes to visit and then so that was Friday night and then Saturday I was basically on tour it was full there were, you know what, and there's, there was so much to do on Saturday, yeah. and you know, so much of it was family friendly, which was nice to see. Beautiful. You know, we kicked off the morning with the um, Canadian Peacekeepers Veterans Breakfast that they mm. have every month with Dad, of course, yes. as, as one of their members. So we, we went to that and then headed off to um, uh, James M. Hill, where they had the District Science Fair. Mm -hmm. my, my weekend was completely with my events on a whole other scale, so I couldn't get to all the things yeah, that you did. Yeah, of course. Did. Yeah, of course. Commitments yeah. otherwise, or I yeah. would have loved to have seen that too. Well, and that's the thing, right? I mean, you can't do it all, and there's, you know, between family commitments and mm -hmm. your own and other mm -hmm. commitments that you yes. have, it's really hard. But it was so cool to see. I think they had about 60 projects kids are from amazing. all over the district. It's beautiful. And I've it's, yeah. Seen lately at Max Aiken, I was like, these kids are doing this kind of thing in grades six and seven and eight. It's seven I guess it was. Yeah, it blows my mind. Me too. It blows my mind. They're so going yeah, really cool to see all that. And um, there was a fundraiser on Saturday for Lynn and Tim Osmond, yes. who both have been diagnosed uh, recently with cancer. So great to see the hall full. It was Hello. at the Lions Club. Um, uh, in Newcastle. It was packed. New what, Mary West, West yeah, Newcastle. And yeah, it was packed all day. Um, and then um, it was Black History Month, of course, yes, in February. And, and I got to stop in and see some of the events. Good. What was and, the highlight of that? Now? Oh, I, I didn't get to see the concert that night, no. but they had, they had hair braiding and beautiful crafts and clothing and Ooh. for sale and it was just music yeah it was fantastic beautiful yeah. what a full weekend then you did the coldest night of the year yeah walk. and that was amazing the like walk. they so they actually yesterday hit 100 percent of their fundraising goal yay i know bravo <laughs> to them that is huge well and what's amazing is it that those funds stay here yes i know to help local uh, individuals and the work that they do at miramichi housing yeah, solutions 
We've had them on. Is incredible. And they've given yeah. us a whole overview of how hard they work and Absolutely. what they put back into this community. Absolutely. They so they do. had 115 walkers, more than 40 teams. Wow. 40 teams and I saw organizations Aww. like NBCC and and just beautiful people from all over the place yesterday and some people did the walk virtually which was great mm -hmm. uh, and, and a lot of people were out walking um, on Saturday and so yeah just so much going on here on one, in one day yeah. for you too <laughs> yeah but it was fun I got yeah. to talk to lots of people and I got to see so many people mm -hmm. and and really take That's in nice. events around you know the community I did a little bit of retail therapy shopping on I got two pairs of shoes but you know what with council as well, Veronique, like that's part not part of being on council, mm. but to me it is a nice part of being on council yeah. is to be at those events Absolutely. where you are engaged with people. They voted you in. They want yeah. to see you. Obviously, they want yeah. to see you do things for a city, which you are yep. as as a council member. Mm -hmm. But they also want to see you and talk to you and share with you and celebrate all that you bring to our city too. Absolutely, as a person. And you know what I find, you know, most often is that that's where people actually tell me you know either what's going really well or what they think needs improvement okay. or you know it's Connection. yeah it's an, a chance that people mm -hmm. you know people might not pick up the phone or send me a Facebook message or whatever yeah, it is yep. but they will often stop and talk to me right that's what I'm you know to say. and that's what I You're really visible. for me that's why I go yeah but the other thing is as a community volunteer and you know this very well getting having people come out and support you is so important and, and they do you know and so when I when I know that you know people have worked so hard pulling these events mm -hmm, together mm -hmm. to show up for a little bit for half an hour an hour whatever it exactly. is exactly it's so it's so critical yes. to one it, it helps to boost morale because I know how I feel when people yes. show up to my events and two to show that it's important in our community it is so and you've yeah. done so much of it over the time well yeah. all of the time you've lived in Miramichi yeah. but particularly um, even more so because you've gotten so many more connections yeah. involved with so many more organizations and yeah. all of that so kudos to you it. keep it up I love keep it, it up. <laughs> the other big thing that's coming up really soon uh, February 28th mm -hmm. actually is pink shirt day so important pink t-shirt day it doesn't matter if you wear a t-shirt yep. or anything but uh, like as in the color but wear pink because it's advocating uh, for the fact that both Bullying is taking place every single day still worldwide. Yeah. It does not matter if it's in the school, the workplace, the home, or online. It's an ongoing huge epidemic, mm -hmm. and we're working at making it better. The theme this year for 2024 worldwide is all kinds of kindness. Oh. Kind of going back to your quote, yeah. uh, it doesn't matter if you um, you know show up to volunteer for an hour, but maybe you want to take a kid that seems to be struggling or that you've heard is having a hard time, and maybe sit with that kid and give him your ear. Yeah. And, and just so, how can I help improve your situation? Yeah. Tell me some ways that I can lead you to a better place. Mm -hmm. um, whatever. But, but that that's what I'm trying to say about all kinds of kindness, and we're kind of focused on that yeah. today. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, it. I can't imagine actually how tough it is to be a kid these days. You know, um, it. You you can't escape the bullying like we maybe were able to when we were younger, right? Because bullying is not a new thing, unfortunately. But you know, when we went home. For the most part that was a safe space for us but mm -hmm. you know with constant access to technology and you know online and there are so yep. many different forums that, that can happen now you really can't escape. escape it no you cannot and 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 i think you know big back factor. when i was in in high school even like you had to have the right jeans and stuff mm -hmm. like that but now i find like you have to have the right phone and the laptop and the yeah. car and the you, uh, the clothes and that and like you, yes. you can't you can't keep up no no and I, I really do think like I'm a parent and I, I want to say to other parents that I didn't raise my kids it wasn't that bad because they're 32 and 25 now but mm -hmm. uh, growing up there was all of course that going on yeah. with them not with them being bullied but around them yeah and yet we had the talk like you know uh, you would tell us if that ever happened to you guys wouldn't you and mm -hmm. they said no we're not you know but like and also the fact that you would never bully other people right I would hope because yep. even though your friends might be um, saying things that aren't kind like be there to stand up against that absolutely we, we we just always said always be kind do not take part in that just to be a bystander mm -hmm. and witnessing a bullying situation if you're there you're party to it yeah. if you're not stepping in to help that person and there's a lot of things I hate to even say it out loud but I'm hearing from really um, a lot of youth mm -hmm. that there's an issue going on with the sexual bullying Oof. online Oof. within 
the teenage, mm. 11 to 18 years. Wow. Preteen. Mm. So you know how you hear and see and watch things that are horrendous on TV about someone sending a nude mm -hmm. to another person? Yeah. It's now happening within the schools. Mm. So I really just want to get the message out there to parents because it's, this is coming to me from parents that have uh, been aware that it's happening, to sit down and talk to your child and know that you know the content on their phone may not be exactly uh, what you ever would mm. dream of it being, other mm. than, hi, how are you doing today? It could be something that's serious, mm. and they're missing it. That's and this hard. is going on, and therefore, you see, you hear about suicide. You yeah. hear about the, the terrible things that happen to kids because of the pressure. Yeah. Well, if you're 11 years old or 12 years old, and you're a little so-called boyfriend says, you know, send me a picture of yourself, you know, with no clothes on, and you do, and then he blackmails you. Mm. Can you imagine at that age trying to cope with that and keep that hidden, and yet try to oblige that so-called little boyfriend, mm. and and how you would feel? Mm -hmm. So it's it's, terrifying. it's it's a very big thing. So I'm just I'm just bringing it up there yeah. because it's something that we don't want to uh, let go. No, and it, and it's you know it, it's overwhelming and it's um, you know such a tough dis discussion to have, such a tough conversation to have, and mm -hmm. you know and not to diminish the bullying that went on when I was a younger person. You know it's it's bullying is bad and horrific no matter when. I just think you know now there's a, there's just so much more access, unfortunately, and and to see that, you know, to know that that's where we've evolved to is, yeah, is terrifying. Yeah, and I think one of the formest, uh, biggest forms of bullying that bothers me the most is exclusion amongst mm -hmm. any age group. Mm -hmm. can be adults. I remember yeah. one time having a position um, at a very large workplace, and it was going on there, and I was like, are, how, are we adults here? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean, like, we're all going to lunch, but you're not going to ask her? Yeah. That's exclusion. That's bullying. Yeah. So there would be times I would sit back, because mm -hmm. I wasn't going to be party to that, right. and have my lunch with this woman that they were either envious of or or threatened by, I don't know the situation, but they excluded her, and yeah. that's definitely a form of adult bullying, and it's happening still. Yeah, absolutely, and it, it's not just something that happens with kids, unfortunately. We do no. see it in the workplace, and yeah. we do see it, you know, um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's tough at any age, and knowing how to handle it is tough at any age, right? Because mm -hmm. I, I know for myself, I was once in a situation like that where I, all of a sudden, was being bullied oh. by someone, and I was like, is that oh. is it is this actually happening to me like you know and and it it took me a minute to kind of you know the next day i was like wow okay. what age group were you i it was like maybe 10 years ago okay you so know and yeah. i was I, like i was a mm. you know fully formed adult but yeah. and i was like wow that just happened to me like and and i felt all of a sudden i felt like my confidence was a bit shaken and i was like you know questioning my own decisions and things like that and yeah. i'm like give your head a shake yeah. no that's when I address things. So when mm -hmm. say, and I sit down and I address that person that I think Absolutely. might be saying something that's going to bother me. But yeah. keep the conversation going on bullying. Absolutely. And and just a, a little bit of history on Pink Shirt Day. Oh, yeah. It started in Nova Scotia by two high school students who saw another student was being bullied for wearing a pink shirt to school. And so it was a, a boy that wore, wore the pink shirt. And so the other two boys, the other two high school students, uh, put this day in action to say pink is great. Do you know what? That was 2007. It's a long so time ago. So I'm proud of those kids. Yeah, that was, yeah absolutely. Yeah, those Nova Scotia kids, yeah, you know. Absolutely. Uh, I just want to give um, a little reminder. I'm going to be there myself because I love that kind of thing. There's a huge Easter market I can't wait. coming up at the Miramichi Exhibition Building. Yes. And it's going to be on March 3rd mm -hmm. from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be everything there as far as vendors go. So, I mean, you know, with Easter coming up and everything and then Mother's day coming up and I'm really excited that the proceeds are going to have a big craft basket and proceeds are going to the hospice mm -hmm. uh, Percy's place I know so, so that was really great of them yeah. to organize and fundraise for that cause absolutely and I uh, I've been to the market a couple of times Beautiful. at the exhibition yeah. and uh, there's always such great stuff Ooh, I come yeah. with a lot of really good so that I get is, some cash you know yeah. some people take visa I, I'm yeah. assuming um, yeah. probably most they a lot of them actually do have those you know those little okay, um, um, on-site machines that, they, that you Debit can use machines? yeah that fit with their phones and stuff yes. like that so they they can okay. take electronic payment but i think you know i think it's always easier to, oh, to bring yeah. cash if you can but oh there's some good stuff there i know i got some i'm not a hot sauce person but mm. i got some wickedly hot hot sauce the last oh. time i gifted it to somebody um but it was it was the flavor was delicious but then it had such a kick on the end i was yeah. like Hot 
couldn't do, couldn't do it. <laughs> uh, oh, well, listen, speaking of hot, yes. uh, there's one more event before we go to break that I want you to talk about, and that's the Guns and Hoses event that's yes. coming up. It sounds fun. Guns and Hoses, Miramichi Fire Department, Miramichi Police Force, next Sunday, March 3rd as well at 145 at the Civic Center. Oh, Saturday is when the market is. Oh, is it Saturday? So then you're thinking... Saturday or Sunday? I can't remember. Okay. Yeah. Guns and Hoses, Miramichi Fire Department and Miramichi Police Department or yes. Police Force. Yes. And where's this? At the Civic Center in Miramichi. And what's it all about? So they do it, they do it every year and the proceeds go, I can't remember what the proceeds are going to this year, but it's a lot of fun. I'd and like to go. I know. We, we, we need to go. And so they kind of, it's a competition? It's a hockey game. Com oh, it's a hockey game. It's a hockey okay. game. They play hockey. All right. So we get yeah. some really good athletes, probably some that haven't Absolutely. been on ice for a while. Absolutely. So it's <laughs> entertaining, very neat. It's very entertaining. And, and, you know, and I can't remember who won last year. I was there yeah. as well, but I can't remember who won. But it's, you know what, it's so much fun for the crowd. And, and you see some really great hockey. Like a lot of these um, players still play in the, you know, in the senior leagues and gentlemen's leagues and ladies leagues and things like yeah. that. So it's really great to see. Mm, nice, nice, yeah. nice. Now, I just want to give a shout out to a lovely gentleman. Do you know Sterling Holmes? I do. He's a mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. guy. And I we can't wish everybody a happy birthday, but I just wanted to take a little moment and wish Sterling a very happy birthday. He's one of my favorite people and he's a total gentleman. Mm -hmm. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. So I'm just hoping after this show that my dog's going to behave because I left her wide open with the radio yes. on and just shut the doors and a couple of toys and she'll probably be there for a while. Perfect. Proceeds from the Guns and Hoses go to the Food Bank and the Special Olympics. Beautiful. Imagine. And we're going to be having more coming on, like about the Special Olympics in a yeah. near future show. Can't wait. So, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, Great we event. are going to go to break, and we have two beautiful um, sets of guests coming on, I guess uh, two ladies. And uh, we'll give it a surprise for you as to what the topic is. We always have amazing people come on, have a chat. Thank you. So, if you want to go now and maybe pick up a little bit of a snack or a little bit of a lunch and a hot drink, Veronique and I are going to come back very, very soon to join you. Thank you. Hello, and we're back another time for uh, Have a Chat, another segment. And I'm your host for today's show, Judy Loge, with my beautiful co-host, Veronique Arsenault. <laughs> Hello, Judy. Yeah, we're having a great <laughs> show because we just had a little quick chat about this, that, and everything. And now we have a wonderful guest on, and that would be Toby DeVoe. We know Toby. You graduated yes. with Toby. Yes, we went to high school together, graduated a, a year or two ago. Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> yeah, five, wasn't it? Five, yeah, we'll go with five. And Toby, like you can tell by looking at her, is a fitness instructor and community mentor for, mentor for better health. And we're really excited to talk about that fitness and health. And we're gearing up for spring now and yep. trying to get in that mindset, which you're in all the time. But <laughs> but for us, we're kind of getting kind of motivated <laughs> to do that. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about yourself, your family, all of that. Hey. So I grew up in Miramichi, as Veronique said. I grew up in Logieville, actually, the big village of Logieville. Yes. And um, went away to school to Mount Allison mm -hmm. for a few years and then graduated from there and came back. My husband and I started a business here. Um, and I've been teaching classes since I was in university and took a little break when oh. my kids were young. But when my daughter was uh, started school, I started teaching again. And she's 22 now, oh, so wow. it's been a while. Um, so I said my daughter's 22, she's living in Toronto, mm -hmm. working right on Bay Street for TD Security. Lovely. So pretty proud of her. Yeah, and she's uh, sweet. my son is 20 and he's in second year at uh, Mount A. And so nice. just got back Saturday, he did a medical mission in Honduras. Oh! So oh that was a big deal. Yeah. So I'm feeling very relieved today that he's home safely. Me too. And, Me too. Uh, he had a very life changing experience. And uh, it's funny because it kind of leads into the you know the, everything you were talking about yes. bullying and stuff with kids and it was really they played a lot with the little kids in these mm -hmm. communities and mm -hmm. you know extreme poverty yeah. but uh, he said they were happy like the yeah. kids seemed happy so it, it was interesting. interesting. Yeah. He it was a to very have on the show some yeah. time to talk about that experience. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, he actually worked for Barony yeah. yeah, this summer with the Irish Festival. Yeah. So. It's an idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm glad yeah. about that experience. It's huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spencer, uh, Spencer was one of our student uh, yeah. employees for the Irish Festival, and just um, just a, a phenomenal outlook on life. Really, I, know. I, I actually learned. Uh, I, I always learn a lot from our students, mm -hmm. but I, I got to sit and talk to to yes. our students last summer, and just phenomenal. 
I love the young outlook on life. Yes. And, and it, you know, it, I, I forget sometimes mm -hmm. that I'm an old lady until I sit and talk to them. <laughs> um, but really, yeah, really uh, great, um, great young great people. Great kids. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So that's it about you then. Yeah. Yes. You're a, you're yeah. a mom. Yeah. So I can't believe the kids are that old, but anyhow. I know, yeah. I, know I, uh -huh. I know, it's hard to believe too. Um, so talk to us a bit, what are some of the easy and practical tips, especially for seniors, but you know, to stay active, to maintain good health, you know, without really kind of over exerting themselves Talk or over talking. Yeah. Talk to me, I'm right here. This is like a big question, right? Yeah. So I'm actually, I just got back from Bay St. Anne. I teach uh, classes there two mornings a week, mm -hmm. and I teach classes through Mamashi as well. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as older adults go, it's the same as the rest of us, right? It's it's that to find something that you enjoy doing. Mm. It um, exercise doesn't have to be painful. It should not be painful. Mm -hmm. And that old, you know, no pain, no gain mm -hmm. thing. That's that's gone. You know, so <laughs> it's to find something that you enjoy doing and and really to move. Yeah. You know, we're like we're just not moving enough. No, that's, we're not. We're not. Yeah. And. Um, so with, with older adults, they, they have sometimes have to modify things. Mm -hmm. And I think it's this fine line of accepting some things that are changing and fighting other things, you know? So you right. have to fight for good health. Yeah. Like you really do. It's Attitude. as we get older, it's uh, you have to make it your mission that you want to live a healthy, vibrant life. Yeah. And you have to do whatever it takes to get that. Yeah. You must you know? feel so healthy. <laughs> no, but seriously, with all of that fitness, every single day, multiple times a week, working out and like you yeah. have to feel good yeah I do feel good the energy's yes up, I your do body's feel good toned, yep. you feel but endorphins kicking in things still like no matter how good you take care of yourself yeah. your body still does age <laughs> you know and you're yeah. still yes. going like yeah. you said you weren't sleeping well no. I'm a terrible sleeper I was gonna say too? do you sleep well no oh. I'm a terrible like but it's not that I don't work on it it's yes. something that's constantly yeah. you know I'm always working on it and okay. I'm tend to be a high energy person yeah. so there you go so are the we. relaxation stuff is harder yeah. for me exactly. so that's my challenge that yes. like the moving's easy for me yeah. but the mm. the slowing we don't down sleep either. No. right yeah <laughs> the world knows now yeah, yeah. <laughs> well and it's interesting because dad is 78 right mm -hmm. and dad and and i think i always think of like to keep something in motion is a lot easier than to get something in motion right. yes right, right. and yeah. dad is 78 and has always been a fit man I know. Yes. and so i now in my in the last few years i'm trying to i'm trying to catch up to dad isn't that you amazing you know and yeah. like we every Beautiful. every year for the last four years we do a 10k um run in ottawa we don't run it a 10k run in ottawa called the army run because and and but he is the one that like Leave i want to be like dad when i'm 78 i want to be in the same fitness and being able to still do a 10k yes yes it's important it's you know? a great role model she's oh, got definitely. there and i'm lucky yes. that way inspiration yeah. um i wanted to ask you um to tell us about the physical literacy uh for the communities it's a pl4c yeah project targeted uh to kids ages 2 to 18 yeah through sport for life what's that all about okay so um it's a two-year project that we started working on actually like it'll be the two years will be up in august August of okay. this year um, and we're a pilot in Miramichi with Kent County actually or the Kent region we um, and there's two other communities in Atlanta Canada PEI is doing it as a province oh. and then there's a community in Newfoundland mm -hmm. um, and so we have a regional director out of Halifax and um, I'm a community mentor with my husband Raymond and also Eddie Pinder who yeah, is a retired right. phys ed uh, specialist and mentor mm -hmm. with the district yeah. and then we have a partner table with like Mango and the district mm -hmm. and uh, there's all kinds of professionals on that. Basically what physical literacy for communities is is a different approach to try to improve physical activity. So. Physical literacy, you probably maybe never heard of it. Really. It's giving kids the skills, the confidence, and the love of movement. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about being physically active, it's about wanting to be physically active and having the, con the skills, but also the love and the confidence to try new things. Nice. Um, and you were talking about bullying and it, this goes perfectly with it. Okay. Sport for Life 
is trying to create durable kids. Mm. That's what they, they say with this project. Mm -hmm. So we want to create durable kids, durable human beings, yeah. strong physically, emotionally, yeah. uh, resilience, um, being Love able it. to handle whatever life throws at them. Yeah. Um, and really physical literacy is, is for life. So you're never too, too old mm -hmm. to begin. Like you said, you're trying to catch up to your dad. Yeah. Um, but this project, we're working specifically with kids in our region, and we've done a lot of work in the schools, and now we're kind of more working with the early childhood piece. Mm -hmm. um, recently, we've started working with the daycares, and I'm doing some training with them, and, and trying to, I think most people know that they have to be active, but reminding yeah. people and giving them some tools to help them. So tools come with, like a lot of training comes with this project, mm -hmm. some free training. So we've taken a lot of training ourselves and uh, we're working to kind of spread it into the community and uh, keep the messaging out there. I feel so good. I, I didn't really know that this was all, you know, yeah. the plan. Yeah, and all these well it took us a really while to kind of get our brain Excellent. wrapped around what the program was. Yeah. And we're just really starting to implement things and go yeah. for it now. And things are starting to, you know, we're starting to see the big picture and all this can really make a difference, you well, know. you are, and it's such a positive yeah. Positive thing, like it's, it's very it, positive. There's nothing negative about it. It's building people up and building yep. kids for the future. Yes. And, and like you said, brave, resilient, courageous, confident, yep. and then physical at the same time. Yes, beautiful. Yep. I love it. One of there's um so Dan and I part of what we do is these this online challenge group that you get a medal at the end. You pick your medal and whatever. And I often see in the group, you know, people say, "Oh, I only you know I'm just starting. I only walked you know mm -hmm. a block today." Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. One of the great things, though, that I think people don't realize is if you didn't walk a block yesterday and you walked a block today. Yes. That's yeah, a great 100%. start. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes, that's what it's all about. Progress, not yeah. perfection, right? Right. Yeah. It's always yeah. progress. And the other big thing, and um, this, this mm -hmm. comes up over and over again, is consistency. Mm -hmm. It's it's not True. glamorous. Yeah. There's no, like, easy fix. There's no, no. like, uh, you know, supplement you can take or anything that, that really works for health. It's about slow, steady, yeah. Stick consistent, to the regime. you know, yeah. moving every day, mm -hmm. trying to make the right choice yeah. as often as you can. Yeah, I know, and I know. Yeah. Some days it's hard. It is, yes, <laughs> Actually, it every day it's hard. Yeah, it can be challenging yeah. for sure. Yeah. But it's mindset. It's, yes. it's like saying, you know, I'm going to do, like you said, one block that lady did. Yes. The next day she did another block. Yeah. That's another day. So yeah. it's like consistency. Even if it's just a block, it's still yes. consistent. Yeah. So and yeah. then two blocks, then yeah. two more blocks. So it's that's yeah. building yeah. up. Yeah. And I, I sit a lot, obviously. I Like well, my job, work. I sit. Yeah, I sit, I sit probably nine hours a day with work. And then I sit at night with council and meetings yeah. and stuff like that. Yes. So, and that was one of my biggest things is that I knew sure. that that was not good. Right. And that I had to get moving. And it's, it's yeah. one of the very few good things I do for myself mm -hmm. as I move every day Wonderful. but um, can you share some like fun and interactive activities that families with children could do that you know kind of promote that healthy living and getting us moving yeah I think I think it's like it doesn't have to be complicated or as difficult as people may think mm -hmm. um, I also volunteer a lot with 5210 which mm -hmm. is um, a project with mango and horizon sponsored and part of that is two hours of less of screen time a day, mm -hmm. an hour of physical activity a day, mm -hmm. they go hand in hand, yeah. right? When you get rid of the screens, you automatically move more. Yes. It's just the way that it is. Mm -hmm. So um, that would be the first tip I would give to any family is to have screen-free time as much as possible mm -hmm. um, and to try to limit that and to get back to basics like playing like yeah, it depends on the age of the kids yeah. but you know um, the Miramichi cross-country ski clubs doing great things with families here yeah. mm -hmm. and the city is always working on things like mm -hmm. next week for March break they have all kinds of activities they mm -hmm. have like Monday night they have a big jumping um, thing at the Golden Hawk from yeah. 4 to 6 and I know my class is canceled Wednesday because they have a floor hockey tournament right, yeah. um, <laughs> there's you know it's a matter of like looking for things to do and maybe not um, and trying to find the the easy fun things yeah. the free, biking. The free you things bike as a family yes pick out a bicycle yeah. let's go have a yeah. picnic somewhere let's drive yeah. a bike down to middle island and yeah. bring out the food have yep. a catch dance you know yes. really it's um, dancing in the kitchen fun yeah mm -hmm. it's it's so true Aww. it's just really and and parents are the biggest role models i know they are, are you listening parents <laughs> yeah biggest role models and i think parents 
think that you know their kid, their friends, like their kids' friends, are more important. But yeah. really, if the parents are modeling it, it, it comes from yeah. that. Yeah. Know? And it doesn't. Ha it doesn't have to cost anything. It no. doesn't have to. You don't have to necessarily have equipment or. No. You can just eat, get up and dance in the kitchen. I did that one yeah. summer during winter. I'm sorry. Was it winter? During COVID. Yes. We um, it was a little bit post COVID, so the restrictions were lifted. We still wore masks, but we got in a basement, a bunch of women, and we danced for an hour. Oh, I think I remember you telling yeah. me about yeah. that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it was absolutely. Fast. And yeah. then people got busy, and then the, then it's harder, you know the yeah. restrictions were lifted, so people were, we couldn't commit as much. But but um, yeah. okay, so Toby, you talked about like, and you talked about consistency mm -hmm. and doing a little bit at a time and building up and all that. But like as we age, and that would be me, you know, I'm mm -hmm. getting up there. How important is it to um, like incorporate that regular physical activity into our daily routines? And I guess I want to talk more about your skin your um like i don't want to have osteoporosis so i mean yes, a little yeah. bit of of lifting of, of posture. what i can your posture yeah. like could you talk to that i know we don't sleep so our skin's not going to feel as good and rosy and, and replenished yeah. as is our body it yeah. has to restore itself with yeah. good sleep so we're not yeah. getting that but like just so yeah the importance of physical exercise the importance yeah. of it i think that the more um the more we know we know that strength training is like key strength training okay. is key um, the one good thing that came out of COVID is a lot of online training mm -hmm. for free mm -hmm. so I've done lots of trainings recently with dementia with osteoporosis with arthritis um, brain health bone health strength training is key mm -hmm. balance okay. is key good to know. Um, and again it's about consistency mm -hmm. so I always tell people when you go on vacation you bring your toothbrush Right. You bring your sneakers. Right. <laughs> you know, like you don't go on vacation from physical activity. You just can't. Just um, and strength training doesn't have to be complicated or expensive either. A resistance band, um, some little, little set weights. of dumbbells, um, swimming, you know, all those yeah. things. It doesn't, you know, gardening, um, anything that's going to give your body a little bit of resistance mm. is good for your bones, good for your, yeah. And it's all going to prevent those things, it's especially true. for women. Like I believe for women, it. I get osteoporosis up is a big, yeah, it's a yeah. big, it's a big deal. So in a class setting, um, and if anyone can go to group fitness or you can do a lot of classes online, um, we work on brain health because we put movements together. You know, you have to take directions, and you don't mm -hmm. necessarily know it's coming. We always work on balance, mm -hmm. and we always incorporate some strength. Mm -hmm. And then you have the social component as well, like Fine. the interaction with other people, and um, and then the cardio, getting your heart rate up, and I was just we know. Know that if your heart's working well, then that's good for your whole that body was, as well. I was just going to talk mm, about that yeah. the heart. How when I'm walking and I'm walking at a good pace, I can feel my heart. Yes. And I'm thinking this is prevention of, uh, you know, of oh. not having a healthy heart. Yeah. If I can do everything yep. to keep my body healthy. And that dementia way. is one of the things that's like really prevalent now because we have an aging population, yes. and we know those numbers are skyrocketing. And exercise can't necessarily prevent it, but it gives you the best shot mm -hmm. at you know if you are diagnosed with something, mm -hmm. it's not. You don't have to stop exercising. Right, it's going right. to help. It's going to help with symptoms. It's going to help. I did this whole course on physical activity with dementia, and it was it was really interesting yeah. and really inspiring mm -hmm. to see people that were living with dementia exercising and okay. different forms of dementia at different stages. Yeah. Oh. And all those things are, are like exercise is a superpower. I know. It's the truth. It is a superpower for our physical health, our emotional health, our spiritual health, mental, like all those things. Key to yeah. a healthy living. And we only it have is. probably like two and a half minutes I left know, before I know our next time. I know, so, uh, <laughs> I know we it's gotta have another question. Um, uh, let's see, let's, uh, 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 uh. what are some healthy meal ideas, maybe your snacks that are suitable for both seniors and for the rest of us? Oh, right. Um, <laughs> so with, with my training with Fitness New Brunswick, my certifications were really only allowed to promote Canada's food guide, mm -hmm. even though there's nutrition is, well, yep. you could do a whole show on that yep. for sure. <laughs> so we look at a plate. That's what we really encourage people to look at their plate and half should be fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. more vegetables, a mm -hmm. little bit of fruit. A quarter is like grains mm -hmm. and a quarter would be your protein. Mm. Um, so as far as making it fun for like generations, it's like involve kids in cooking, you know, That's nice. involve them in, you know, going to get the groceries, making the list, yeah. you know, maybe looking at recipe books together yes. and, uh, 
you know, finding things, kids are definitely more apt to try it uh -huh. if they've helped prepare it or if they've chosen enough, it. Uh, yeah. And um, and grandparents and, you know, older adults have a lot to share with yeah, young, you know, do. I know my kids used to always bake and cook with my parents yeah. when they went to sleep over and stuff like that. And uh, some of their happiest memories yeah. are baking with them. Actually, when my daughter was home at Christmas, she went down to my parents and baked with my mother for oh, like oh that's awesome yeah yeah <laughs> that's so nice and that's and where you get those memories too right that oh time. for sure yeah. Yeah. yeah and I was thinking too I just saw recently before we go to break uh, the little things you can do as far as making let's say a koala bear so make the eyes into olives and the nose into tomato and all right that. Yes. so much but thank yeah. you Toby Duvall <laughs> and of course very unique we're going to be back for more have a chat don't go too far thanks Hello and welcome back. We're in our last segment of Have a Chat. It's a beautiful Monday here in Miramichi. We're at the Rogers Studio. I'm your host for today's show, Judy Loge, and I'm always happy to be with my co-host, or if she's hosting, Bernie Garcia. So glad to be here on a Monday with you. Yeah. <laughs> and we're bright eyed and bushy tailed, folks. Absolutely. <laughs> we have a lovely lady. Now, we just finished with Toby DeVoe, who was very great talking about fitness. She's gotten me inspired now. I know. We And, and yeah, we need more information from Toby, and, and, yep. and we'll do that actually to come. Yeah, so thanks yeah. to Toby for yes. being here. And now we have the lovely Lily Verge. That's a very nice name, Babino. It's the last you. name. It's beautiful. Thank you. And Lily is the owner of Comic Alley. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And organizer of Miracon Comic Cosplay Sci-Fi and Pop Culture Convention. Now let me do that again. <laughs> Real that's fast. A lot. Let me do that that's in French. A big mouthful. Yeah, no, that's it great is. though, yes. Lily. That's quite the title and quite the um, organization you have, Thank I must you. say. So first of all, we know you and you've been on one time before, but for the viewers, tell the ones who do not know you a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm originally from Miramichi, um, but I think everybody in Miramichi knows everybody, so I belong to Cindy and Wayne. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I have two beautiful sisters, and I have two beautiful children. I have a 19-year-old who graduated from NBCC in Moncton, and he's uh, working in his field, a small engine repair. Okay. And I have a beautiful, beautiful 14-year-old daughter who just started her first year at JMH. Nice. And um, she's loving it and loving school and her teachers. And, and um, your hubby. Yeah. I have a wonderful husband. <laughs> Just because he's not too far away, yeah. so we, look at him, we thought we might put a um, plug in for him. No, he, he's kind of awesome. We've been together for about six years, married for two, Love. and he still makes me laugh. Yeah. Like, we're, we're just... Really good team. Mm, we're good together. I love yeah. it. That's awesome. I love it. Well, thanks for sharing that about yourself. <laughs> so, um, tell us about, because it's, and I will admit to knowing little to nothing about cosplay, and mm -hmm. I am a sci-fi fan, but... Uh, little to nothing about cosplay and all that kind of stuff, but so intrigued and just really proud of the fact that you've brought this the last few years here to Miramichi. So tell us about, mm. and I want to get the whole name in there, Miracon <laughs> Comic Cosplay Sci-Fi and Pop Culture Convention. <laughs> and what makes it so unique? Um, I think what makes it unique is the fact that it's got this almost magical ability to bring people together. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean... There's all these different fandoms, and I don't know the best way to describe a fandom, but basically a community of people that love a certain genre. Right. Um, but it brings all these fandoms together, and they get to really express themselves in a way that they may be not able to do uh, on a normal day. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, it doesn't matter, like you could be a hardcore Star Trek fan or mm -hmm. Star Wars and I mean, I know there's a whole Trekkie Wars yes, thing going yes, on, yes. but um, <laughs> that's never really a problem. I mean, everybody just loves it. It's such a great vibe to be around mm -hmm. and it's so welcoming that yeah. when I first started doing this, I was so surprised by the welcoming vibe that everybody just put out mm -hmm. that it's just something I knew I had to be a part of because it was just so warm and right up it, was, your alley. it was so no fun. I know. 
<laughs> right up your cosmic alley. That's right. <laughs> right, right up my alley. <laughs> I think it's, you're the president as well. Like yeah. you have, you're right at the top of all this whole thing. Like a busy woman and trying mm -hmm. to organize and run the whole show, and with help, of course. But yeah. what inspired the creation of the Miracon event, and how has it evolved over the last three years? Um, well, essentially, I I have been doing this a lot, and when I lived in Moncton, I did it down there a little bit, and. Um, when we moved home, uh, I was like, there's nothing like this in Miramichi. Nope. There's not a lot for going on for kids here. There's not a lot. And it, it's kind of like, OK, well, what can we do? Well, I was like, we're going to have to put this together, and we're going to try this here. And trying it the first year, I was nervous. I was like, OK, yeah. maybe we'll get a couple hundred people, because I knew there was people coming from away. Mm -hmm. But then that first year, we ended up with over 700 people. Wow. And really? Yeah. <laughs> it was at the rod that year. Right? It was, yeah. Imagine. And we very quickly outgrew the rod, and we had to move oh. into the bigger venue, which was the uh, eco center. In the last two years, you've done it. At yeah. The, like yeah, this year, yeah. third year, right? Third year, yeah. Third year, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, and I got to. I I went last year to yeah. the um, the Miramichi Eco Center, and I will. I oh. was. Mm very pleasantly surprised because yeah, I did I not expect it. I did not expect that when I went and you know you wa I walked in and there was all of these booths set up and there was all I was probably one of the very few that was not actually costumed yeah you know and so woman though they knew you sure. were superwoman <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um but and there was like all these like you know displays and and interactive exhibitions and things and I was just everywhere I went I was just kind of like oh Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Like it was, Gosh. it was wild. That sounds like such a big job. 700 yeah. people and then you've outgrown that yeah. number now. And so it just keeps increasing. And as the numbers increase, your workload increases and your ideas have to come bigger and better because you want to make mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. always and you know excel. What? The first year, 700. Do you want to take a wild guess as to what our attendance was last year? Last year? Oh, can I, can I, I will take it. I'm going to double it. Okay. So, um, was it keep 1400? going. No, really? yeah. we were nearly two thousand people. On, were you blown away or overwhelmed or uh, pleasantly surprised? Um, I'm always a little overwhelmed. <laughs> it's my natural, it's my resting face <laughs> being overwhelmed. Um, but I was, um, I was very, I was caught off. I was like, this is amazing. We had a line up out the door for two hours. But you could handle it though. You were, yeah. that's what I'm saying. You were prepared for what if we get this many people? I'm always prepared that is for good. everything. Yeah, and the key. Yeah. To success. And I mean, coming up with new ideas and bigger and better activities is just always something that's come to me like that. So oh, nice. it wasn't, you know, we, we introduced Nerf Wars last year, which was a huge hit. What was it? Nerf Wars. Oh, yes. You so that was really yeah. fun. We, we gave a bunch of kids guns and foam bullets, and we're like, here, go to town, and they loved it. Yeah. Okay, but all ages, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody was Big having event. a great time. Huge like, event, then. We had something for everybody, mm -hmm. and this year's going to be even better. When is it? It's on May 18th. May 18th mm -hmm. is what day of the week? It's a Saturday. Saturday, May 18th. Yeah. Good time. Great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. But so it cosplay involves a lot of creativity and passion for oh, yes. for the craft, right? Mm -hmm. So what are some of the most impressive costumes or performances that you've seen? Um, I think one, I mean, I have to mention the, um, I don't even know their names, but they are the guys that walk around in the Transformer costumes. One of them is Bumblebee, and what? I don't know what the other one is. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen um, them. They walk around. They're from here. Oh, yeah. They're they from here. all the time yeah. like Not all the time. <laughs> Just that I guy. thought, where have I been? No, no. <laughs> no, no, not Could it be all. today? Maybe I'll come around a bit. <laughs> um, actually, funny story is when there's events happening downtown Chagham, they are yes. constantly walking up and down the street. Where yes. have I been? Yeah. Under a rock? So there is one of them is is yellow bumblebee from the Transformer movies, and then the other one is blue, and I don't know what. I think it's Optimus Prime. Oh, is he Optimus I Prime? I think great. Yeah, I okay. thought I could have enough, but I guess I no. Didn't. <laughs> you missed that one. But no, they put so much. It's it's amazing because all this stuff it feels like kind of like a, a really hard foam, but they put so much work into it. It's amazing. And to have that creativity is unbelievable. It is yeah. that incredible. So how do you think events like the Miracon Festival contribute to the sense of community and camaraderie among cosplayers and the fans? Um, that one's, I don't know how to put it into words. Like oh. I, when I said before, it was kind of magical. It really is because, I mean, you take a group of people who have 
otherwise nothing else in common. And you put them together because they're so creative and it just makes something that is almost beautiful yeah. and very together and just there's never anybody that really feels left out because there's always something that is welcoming. Well, back to our thing about inclusion yeah. and, yes. and, and togetherness and yep. building and being kind to one another. And it's a very happy event. It is. Very uplifting is. and fun, fun. There's nothing, you know, not to love about it. Exactly. It's, it's kind of just this one big endorphin boost that Holy. everybody... It's fun, I guess. Mm. Do it this year. Get the nurse No, time. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good, but I, I loved going, and I will go again this year. It just seemed fun. Like yeah. that was that was the okay. feeling that I had when I was there, and so the word's out, folks. Yeah. You know what's happening on May 18th. It's yeah. uh, coming right up. I mean, that will yeah. be a nice time of year to have it too. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's generally pretty nice around that time. Good. So good, good time. Um, what are some of the more memorable, funny moments that have happened? <laughs> okay, so this one didn't necessarily happen here, although I'm sure it could because <laughs> there's plenty of cosplayers that do Spider-Man, but. When we did one in Moncton, um, one of my friends was dressing up as Uncle Ben. I don't know who is familiar okay. with Spider-Man yep. and mm. Uncle Ben. Yep. Well, he, he dies in the beach. Yeah, he dies. Um, <laughs> but he literally, Uncle Ben, the cosplayer, went up and died in front of every Spider-Man. Oh, okay. no! Yeah, oh, and man. that was, it was really, really funny yeah. to see it all go down. Every time. Every time. Every, time. every Spider-Man he'd come across, he'd be like, Peter, it's me, Uncle Ben. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I can kind of picture it. Yeah. That would be fun. That's really one funny. of the, that, those, you know, real pivotal moments in the yeah. Spider-Man franchise, like every, it is, is the death of Uncle Ben because he's his mentor. Right, right. He's his, you know. Yeah. And so when he dies in the beginning, it always kind of launches him into becoming Spider-Man. Spider I yeah. gotcha. I yeah. got yeah. it. <laughs> so what are some of the must, like the musty attractions with this? Um, you know, and the activities that attendees can really look forward to, like just kind of break it down a little bit more you know, to some of the highlights of it. We, this year, partnered up with Adventures in Miramichi, who um, are bringing their Nerf Wars to us, so I don't have to take care of that, thank goodness. Yes. <laughs> um, but they're bringing Nerf Wars, they're bringing laser tag, inflatable archery. Oh, um, inflatable archery. Oh, good, I can shoot stuff without hurting anybody. Ah. Yes. <laughs> um, we actually are bringing in a group from Halifax called Game Over Cancer, where they do a lot of fundraising um, every cent they make goes towards the Canadian Cancer Foundation. That's beautiful. Um, and what they do, they bring gaming setups. So we're going to have 10 different stations with TVs, video games, the controllers, everything oh, you wow. need to play and game out that's, until your heart's content. That's mm. new? Yeah, that's new. That's new. Everything's um, changing up. Like you're doing better and better every year. We actually, and I'm so excited to say this, we have an actor flying in from Vancouver. Can we go greet him, Veronique and yes. I? I'll, go dr I'll drive him, pick him yes. up at the airport. Here yes. in uh, actually, we were... Him. We were sponsored by Town Mazda, and okay. they will be doing that for us. Perfect. Shout out to Town Mazda. <laughs> Thank you to Town Mazda. Uh, I'm very excited, but he's a, he's a guy from a popular TV series, and a lot of people seem to be very excited of his arrival. Mm -hmm. I personally, because he's on one of my favorite shows. Oh. So. You can't helps. say it's a surprise. I'll try not to faint. No, um, his name is Ty Olson, okay. and he's best known as right now as Benny from Supernatural. Okay. Um, uh. But funny enough, when I was looking into Ty, there was this show growing up, my sisters watched it all the time, called Dragon Tales. Mm -hmm. And it was on for a couple of years, but he actually voiced one of the main characters. Oh, okay. And I had no idea until yeah, I looked no. him up, and I was like, that's cool, I thought he was Benny, but he's Ord. So that is cool. <laughs> well, that's a big thing to get him coming in, too. Yeah. Gee, it's really your exciting. brain's going and fast forward every year to, I know, to do yeah. bigger and better things. I know. Love um, it. So, and cosplay really is about bringing those characters that we see, you mm -hmm. know, in shows and in comic books and everything to life. So how do you think, you know, having an event like this, especially in Miramichi, really kind of helps the fans express themselves? You know what? We have an animation course at our college mm -hmm. that there's not, there, before this, there was not really anything for them to do, mm -hmm. like uh, to showcase their work. But mm -hmm. in addition to having a fun place to go, you know, once a year, they can come and show off their stuff. Like we have people that are amazing artists that come and just show off their art. Yeah. And it's it's just it's really a great thing mm -hmm. because I mean, it's just um, it's something that I believe is important to showcase the local mm -hmm. talent and the yeah. local artists. 
and yeah yeah so in our last couple of minutes talk to us about the need for or if you need volunteers is there such a thing as the people that you want to bring on board and there, where to contact? there is a massive need for volunteers okay. there's so much going on the day of that I'm only one person. I, I, as much as I would love to go yeah. and do everything at once, but we, yeah. we need so many people to make this a well-oiled machine. Um, so if anybody is interested in volunteering, they can actually send us a message on our website, which is miraconfestivals.ca, okay. and um, or send us a message on our Facebook page, yeah. and we will happily take anybody. <laughs> Maybe give that one more time, the contact information as far as the, you know, you have Facebook okay. and you also have... The yeah, uh, Facebook at Miracon Festival Association Miracon. or miraconfestivals.ca. Okay, easy enough. Yeah. But it's coming up like, you know, we're almost to March now. I know. Yeah. And so is there anything else you want to say, get out there before we say goodbye to you on the show? Is there any final message that you want to pump out there to our audience? If you're afraid to come because you've got nobody to come with, mm. because you're worried that it's not for you, just come. Yeah. You're gonna find Absolutely. you're gonna find like minded people. Plus we are gonna be doing a, a little introductory event before okay. probably the day before where mm -hmm. you can come and meet people to go mm -hmm. to the event with. Awesome. Mm -hmm. so. so just talk to us in our last minute or so about the, like we know it's May 18th, but what does the day look like? How, when does it start? You have to register, um, and then when does it end? Uh, it starts for VIPs at 10 a.m. Oh, we'll be there. <laughs> that's, that's you guys. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> that's you guys. Um, and then the rest of the people can come in at about 11. It goes to about 7 o'clock at night. Wow, that's a long day. I know, eh? Yeah, but, but it's so busy. It's so busy, and we need that. I mean, I thought about next year it might actually be a day and a half. I'm yeah. not sure yet. but That's amazing, eh? Um, but yeah, and there's a lot jam-packed into that little time. I mean, it's a long day, but it's yeah. such a little time when you have all these events going on. But I can see why you need volunteers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Is your hubby totally engaged? Your children in on this with you? Is it a family thing? I know you're the kind of the overseer of it all, but are they? It's a family venture. It definitely is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my daughter doesn't like to admit that she does it because she's too cool for Obviously anything cool. right now. She's 14. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, my husband is. His support is unwavering. That's so he's there it. for me and he does everything perfectly. We have to <laughs> give him a shout out, don't we, Veronique? Mm -hmm. Like we sometimes bring these lovely people on and their other have sit and just, you know, watch them, support them. And, and we feel really proud to be a part of this team. Like we're in our ninth year now. Absolutely. Right? So I know, hard to believe. Yeah, so on the note uh, that we want to end on is to wish everybody a really good, positive week. And again, um, going back to our quote, be kind, everybody. Don't allow bullying. Stand up for bullies. Have a great week. See you next week. Bye. Thank you, Lily. Thank you for having me.